the other video uh, when he was talking about Genshin Impact, it seems like he was glazing a little bit. But now apparently he played the game for 700 hours in total, which, okay, let's see. How long have you played it for? So Necrit's first Genshin video, three weeks. And is there another one or no? Yeah? Yeah, for the first time, so 700 hours and three months. That's doable if you have a mental illness. And let's be real, look at the... Uh, he definitely does. Let's find out, bro. 700 hours to find its flaws. I feel like it takes, what, five seconds to see the in-game currency purchase tab to find it? But what did you find in 700 hours? I guess we about to find the f*** out. Beat Genshin Impact. A bold statement? Maybe. A very subjective statement? Okay. Definitely. But I did it. A bit over four months ago, yep. I started playing Genshin Impact for the first time. And looking back at my first time experience, it is funny to see what points I was focusing on. Like, remember when I was wondering if the reason why the healing statues have a limit is because it is going to be a time gate later? Well, now I'm just wondering, why is it there? So yeah, four months later, I- Hey bro, I'm wondering the same thing, man. I'm wondering the same thing. ...and say that after crawling through this very confusing hole, I came out on the other side with all the major story quests complete, a few reputations maxed out, quite a few 5-star characters on my account there while staying free to play, and free with the play? final floor of the Spiral Abyss cleared. There you go! And that's all while amassing 700 hours played. Throughout this journey, every time I talk that about Genshin, people- a f absurd amount of time. ...mentioned that I am overly positive about everything, but- that's because it was all a setup for this moment. Okay, what happened? Okay, Negro, what happened? Now, once again, it's not that I get excited for people to have a negative opinion of Genshin. I like when people have a realistic opinion of Genshin because the honeymoon phase is strong in this game. So what, what's, your, what's your opinion now? Because today we are not going to talk about the amazing combat or the great events. Yep. We are going to talk about the garbage. And that goes for both the gameplay and the story. So strap up and get... Okay, let's hear it, baby. I'm good to go. Please, God, just talk about how cringe it is that people laugh at Paimon emergency food. Holy shit, please, God, bring up the dialogue bloating. Like, dude, you know what I would prefer? Instead of, like, these four to five hour like a story quest just make them 30 minutes with no dialogue bloating i would enjoy them so much f more just like get to the f point don't waste my time just let me have i would rather have a short good experience than a long bad experience like holy shit get ready because it's not often you can see me mad or disappointed okay but today let's go it, baby. gonna be one of those days just like it goes for every new Genshin player, my journey started with the story. By all means, the story is the true raw experience here. Yep. If Genshin does anything at all, it is telling stories for their characters. Yep. And that's for the better, or much, much worse. It is much, much worse because the reality is that Genshin Impact has one of the most complex, dynamic, fun combat systems out of, you know, at least the top 50 games ever made. It's a joy to do and they say well you can't do it because you're gonna have to deal with story and then they take the story and they have what 40 characters and then they say oh yeah we're two and a half years into the game let's tell a story about a f shop and npc for three hours for three hours here's a crazy idea here's a crazy idea if you're watching dragon ball z with goku krillin gohan piccolo vegeta majin buu cell frieza tian yamcha boma chi chi that's like what 10 12 would you want to watch hold up the, the, the tax quest was four hours would you want to watch 14 episodes about a shopkeeper in that world the answer no! You see, previously you might have heard me saying that Genshin has some of the best stories told in gaming. Which is a statement I do believe is true. Yeah, I think the Inazuma Raiden Shogun quest was a, a genius quest. Good from start to finish. The, the story of Kazuha gaining the new vision, the loss of his friend due to the Raiden Shogun, overcoming that, unlocking the new vision in order to overcome the Raiden's thrust was insane. The, the Lumine walking down from the Inazuban temple with like the different like black and whites and like the, 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 the scattered mind, the blurred vision. Like it was even good. Even Paimon was good for that little bit. But that shit was good. Problem is I don't think we've gotten anything of that quality 
in a long time. But yeah, and the, and the killing of, uh, well, you know, one of the baddest bitches in gaming, but that's okay. Her and Bendy still have a great time uh, off stream. Ooh. To give you some examples without any major spoilers, Raiden had some really strong points. That's what I said. Ezum has an excellent story with even better side quests, and Sumeru has some incredible hits, especially Nahida's quest, which is simply referred to as the loop. I think Nahida's quest, my opinion, I think it was awful. That's just my opinion. I did Nahida's quest, and it was kind of just like, let me rephrase that. It was 80% bad, 20% good. The pacing of that quest was not good. The moments were good. The moments were good, but the pacing was horrible. Nah, you didn't play it? No, yeah, I did. You start it, you go to the shopkeep, you notice different objects, and then all of a sudden you go back in time, and then you you, you go back and you do the, the, the shopkeep, and you see the objects, and then you go back again, and then you say, wait a minute, I've been here before, you predict the future, yada, 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 fake, or other Nahida dies, real Nahida lives, blah, 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 you wake up. Like, shit like that. That was pretty much the whole quest. That one? Oh, that's the Archon quest, not her character? Oh, wait, there's a different one? The Nahida story quest is very good? Really? Okay. Well, then maybe when I go back on 4.0, maybe we'll play it. Maybe we'll try it. One was amazing. But while these big moments in the story are amazing, the uh -huh. way you get there can be painful. Thank you for admitting it. Holy shit. God, I feel like everybody's just waking up. The pacing in Honkai Star Rail was incredible. Like, you know what's also f crazy? Like, people will act like what I'm asking for is unreasonable. No, it's not. Because even the Honkai Star Rail devs, aka Hoyoverse, realize that two of the quests in the main story shouldn't be there. So they're editing it out, making them side quests that you can go do if you want. But they're kind of keep it short and concise. That way, the new player experience is great. They need to do the same thing for Genshin Impact and get rid of all the f filler and just have all the main shit like dragon ball z kai that shit bro just make the good moments only happen and then make all that other shit filler the best example is inazuma and here just know that i am going to spoil the very beginning which to be honest as you'll see is gonna be totally fine when okay. you arrive in this beautiful region in yep. order to get to the great parts of the story you have to run around and get a pass that lets you freely walk around. To get it, you first have to run around and help people deal with taxes for three hours. You then have to learn about- The fact that people accept that shit is crazy. Well, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean you don't want to do taxes for three hours? AKA the entire length of a Lord of the Rings movie. Good God, Necrit. Thank you for noticing this shit because I don't know how the- Anybody else doesn't. ...about the conflict between the local houses for the next two hours. Then things yep. get a little bit more interesting as you learn about who Raiden is, before it gets to the part where you set up fireworks for four hours. Yep. Honestly, I know there were more chores in between these points. Yep. But my brain blocked out the memories because it's trying to protect me. What I know as a fact... Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, dude, there dude, there was a copy pasta in my chat. This one, dude. Oh my god, the blacksmith. Excuse me, sir. Are you Anemona Togu of the Anemona Smithy? Not right. I'm Anemona Togu of the Amenema Smithy. And that's my son, Amenema Dipshit. You must be here for my nephew, Amenema Nemamanona, and his sister, Amenoma Minomamamamamona of the Anemamamamona Mimanamamama store. If you played Inazuma, you remember that quest? Oh my god. Put me out of my misery act is that there was a total of 10 hours of setup yep. before you got to the great part of the story of the region which wouldn't be an issue if the payoff was godly yep. but truth be told specifically in inazuma the finale was simply really good but there is no way this can justify four hours of setting up fireworks if you think genshin impact does not have a pacing issue you are insane I am so proud of the crit right now. I am so goddamn proud of the crit. It's insane. I know they were important. And do you want to know why it's so important that like I get people to acknowledge this? Is because it is so easily fixable. It's ridiculous. Just remove the quest, barring like maybe Tepe and that other chick from Sumeru, where you like she like dies and shit. Like NPCs dying, like that's those are generally fine quests. Like just edit those quests out, make them side quests that people can go do optionally, but don't make people sit through that to progress that's insane because they were used to distract the guards but four hours
And that's not even counting the storyline of the entire Commission War. A massive war that is supposed to shape the future of this region. But due to technical limitations, the game only shows us a 5v5 battle. Oh my god, I remember that. It was so bad, bro. It was so bad. Oh my god. You know what it reminds me of? Like, like Honkai Star Rail. No, I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm, 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 I'm gonna glaze my real quick. Oh my god, I love it so much. Honkai Star Rail overcame this issue where, like, Bronya was supposed to do, like, a massive speech, right? So what they did was, is they just put, like, slapped in a big picture of what it was supposed to look like, because the technical limitation of mobile games. Circumvent the issues with smart ideas that your other team is doing, bro. It, it's insane. So yeah, sometimes the game can flop really heavily on the immersion, but that's not the point for now. The point is, sometimes the story can drag a lot, and that's for two reasons. First of all, Genshin relies on their gacha system, which yep. means one thing they have to promote their characters. Yep. Which is how, a lot of the time, you end up with a lot of characters who are forced into a story. Yep. Not because they would necessarily enhance the story experience, True. but because it is a five-star character. They have to give them as much spotlight as possible. In True. my opinion, Yoimiya is the perfect example here. Honestly, she is such a great character, she is. but her story should have been her own character quest. I agree. There was no reason to force her into the Archon quest so brutally. And I do believe that might have soured the character for some people, which later got saved because she's a really good DPS. Thankfully, later Hoyoverse realized that forcing characters into the story no matter what is not a great idea. And True. so for some of the new characters, instead of just forcing them into the main story, it seems like they either put them into events, which usually... Well, see, the thing is, uh, Nikrit, is because that, that's a four-star, right? They, they might not fit a four-star into the story, but, uh, you know, all the five stars, all the five stars, they just they just throw them in there. So she's 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 just not in there because she, she ain't a moneymaker there, buddy. Just want to just correct you there, big guy. Usually get their own stories, or for the four stars, they give them the hangout quests. But then there is the other issue that gets... Nobody does the hangout quest. Let me rephrase that. Less than 10% of the players do the hangout quest. Jin has when it comes to his stories, and it's still a really big one. It is an issue that stayed in the game till this day. And that's the fact What's that? that no matter what conversation you are in, be it a big Archon quest or a lead up to what's happening in a region. Please say Paimon obliterates all immersion. Please shit on Paimon. In the vast majority of cases, they say a lot. And yet they say so little. I can't be the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is called dialogue bloating. It's like, for example, what am I drinking? Oh, it's water. What are you drinking? Oh, so it all goes down. It all comes back to my childhood where I sat next to this nice, beautiful river called Chestnut Ridge Creek. And as I sat there looking upon it every day, I only thought of one thing and one thing alone. What could possibly quench my thirst? I looked towards my aunt and uncle and they looked at me from heaven. They died. Yes, they brought it back to 1962. The days of the Hillichurls first walked the earth. Shut the f*** up, bro. <laughs> we get it, dude. The only one who noticed this, right? There are times when the dialogue just drags. Which really sucks because this also happens during the big storylines which I really liked. Yep, and the worst thing is, and I'm hoping he brings it up, the dialogue drags and then you know what happens? Paimon says it again. She doubles it up. Like, no matter what plot twist happens or what setup happens, everything has to be explained. Exposition is like 80% of the dialogue. Yep. What's crazy is that you can easily cut the dialogue in half. The story would stay, and in many cases, it might even be better. Yep. Because it would actually help with the pacing. In movies yep. and entertainment media in general, there is a golden saying that separates good and bad storytelling. Show. Don't, Don't tell. tell. It's like when they say, oh... I remember it, 200 years ago, there was a war, there were dragons. Just show a cutscene of the war. Just don't tell us about it, just show us. Show us the war. And if you can't show us, then don't tell us. Okay, we don't, we don't wanna hear all this shit. A rule that tells the writers to show people what's going on yep. and let them realize what's happening. By doing so, your viewers engage with the story from the side of the beholder. In Genshin, this immediately gets thrown out the window when Paimon appears on screen. 
and she explains every single tiny detail you might have missed with very long and complicated sentences. Just take Paimon out of the game. Have an arc or Lumine or Aether get hit in the head and they go back in time and Paimon never existed, right? Just make it to where Paimon never existed and then at the end of the game, our goal is to save Paimon, to bring her back. And then that's how you can retcon all of these stories and all of these completely unnecessary dialogue quests. Like, yeah, Paimon actually does have some great scenes in the story. But this is not one of her stronger sides. And in case Paimon is not available, my favorite case of telling, not showing, is when the screen goes black and there is a text that pops up to tell you what's happening like it's a silent movie from the 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> What's strange is that it is obvious that the writers on Hoyoverse are good. They are using proper setups and payoffs. So are they doing this just to give the game longer content? Well, yes. unfortunately, things get a bit worse. Because you see, why- Really? Wait, what's worse than that? Okay, I'm confused. Well, the main story of Genshin literally has multiple days of raw voice acted conversations. It gets quite bad when you realize that all the side quests are not voice acted. Yep. But they still have the same kind of long conversations. Yep. So should you venture outside of the boundaries of the main story, get ready to read a lot. Dude, 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 you want to know? You want to know how I play my side quest? Here's what my keyboard sounds on my side quest. Praying to f God, it just get it just just get on with it. Just get on with it. And I mean a lot. For many of you, this absolutely kills the pace, likely making you skip the dialogue and then look for videos on YouTube to tell you what happened. It's insane how much better content creators, like for example, Ashikai. Ashikai can tell the game's story and lore better than the own company. It's it's insane. It's insane. I, I much rather just skip the side quest, skip the story quest, and then hear a summary by someone with real passion of their dialogue rather than whoever the f*** is making the dialogue like this. Or perhaps you don't care at all and you do nothing. Leaving the poor cabbages sad because their history is quite cool. But you see... They even stole the Koroks from Breath of the Wild, bro. Come on. When it comes to the storytelling, there is even more things that we can mention. Such as events. In my opinion, the FOMO is not as bad here. At least that's okay. because the pros outweigh the cons. Yeah, the, the events FOMOs aren't uh, bad because they don't give you any f rewards. With all the events that come and go, the world actually feels alive. It simply wouldn't feel the same without them. But it's such garbage that actually important lore is locked behind these events. Yep. If it was just a side story, for example, like what happened during the lunar celebrations, then sure, you can have most of the story be the day-to-day -day casual jobs of your characters, while also having some important lore in the middle of it. I am so curious to see how he feels about the actual event gameplay. Like, like Fallout and Mario Party Genshin Impact, rather than just, I don't know, more of the gameplay that we play the game for. I'm totally fine with that. But when the event itself is a core part of setting up the world, yep. that's absolute garbage. For I example, agree. I have no idea who this guy is. I went through all the stories and then he just randomly appeared in the middle of an event and I'm supposed to know him? In my chat, people kept telling me that he's actually gonna spoil a really important part of the story. And I'm just sitting here thinking, I just wanna play the game. Not to mention that even after I finished the event where he appeared, because I had no context for his story, if he spoiled anything, well, I missed it. So yeah. Dude, dude, and that's the worst thing. The Albedo Eula Amber, uh, shit, Bennett story quest on Dragonspine was one of my favorite quests in all of Genshin Impact. And figuring out, like, who the real Albedo was, it was so good. And they time-gate it and then delete it. Like, bro, what? Dude, Eula's ass looked so fine in those quests. Like, how in the f*** did they f*** 
that up. Uh, events are great. The way they tell stories. Is How awesome. in the f Please don't shove important lore into them. I missed two years worth of events and apparently some of that story was quite important. But you know what? Enough talking about the storytelling. Let's move on. As I continued on my adventure through the story, the game finally introduced the Spiral Abyss to me. This is where I realized... I guess this is the end game. Yep. And so I set it up to be my goal to be... The end game of Genshin Impact is quitting the game. ...the final floor of the Spiral Abyss. At which point, my viewers were like, yeah, good luck with that. Unless you're a whale, see you in three years. So... Being the insane person I am, to prove them that I don't have to pull for anything, I decided to do it as a free-to-play player. There you go! Which made me realize... Amazing! I had some planning to do. You see, it is true that at the beginning I got a bit lucky. My first ever pull gave me the look, whose gameplay I... Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's super lucky. I liked very much, so I decided to carry him with me to the end of the challenge. But the first banner that popped up when I was playing was for Hu Tao and Yelan, who are allegedly one of the best pyro carries in the game and one of the best aggro DPS supports. Okay. And um, I got them both within like 20 pulls of each other. And after them, I also got okay. Bennett and the Water Boy, which gave me a pretty good Water metaphor. Boy! So at that point, even though I was a f That team unironically is crazy free-to-play player. My account certainly didn't look like it, which made me realize my free-to-play challenge is kinda stupid. Because what's the difference between whaling and just getting lucky? The difference is none. Yeah, I'm tashed. To be exact. <laughs> but I still had to plan around my pulls. Because the Spiral Abyss requires two full teams to beat it. And even though my first team was really stacked, my second team was just random garbage. So if there was something I wanted to pull for, it would have to be for the second team. Of course. And yes, at that point, I also realized that the gacha system is quite garbage. But Yo. I kind of accepted it for what it is. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of indifferent. It's like going into the liquor store and complaining that they have booze. Regardless, it didn't take long and I rounded up my second team. With my main carry there being Hu Tao. There you go. And even though this Huge. meant that I had two vape teams, I was happy. Until I hopped into the early floors to test out the team. And I was forced to see the truth. My eyes were forced open. What happened? Hu Tao sucks. What are you talking about? No, she don't. Wait, do you not have staff a homo? It is true that she is really powerful and that she is one of the best DPSs. Oh, okay. All right. All right. But my God, her gameplay sucks. Oh, dude. Yes, dude. I agree. I agree. Bro. She's so f boring to play. It is. What? You have the animation cancel? I'm good, bro. I'm f Good. Optimal DPS, you have to charge attack and jump in the middle of the animation to interrupt it. The most cringe shit ever. Over and over and over. That's what you do the whole fight. People kept so telling bad. me, you know, it is what it is. To which I... Okay, Asma. I say, nay, that is not fun. I don't want to cancel animation my way to hell. Yeah. so... I threw Hu Tao into the garbage can and there you go. I benched her indefinitely. Yes, I am there aware you go. that I got lucky and I got her on my first attempt on the banner, but I don't like the gameplay. And if I don't like it, I'm not playing it. Of course, this based. Well, you should read the story. Uh, nope, because I don't like it. So I'm not gonna. This decision started a bit of an argument. And this argument made me realize that the Genshin community splits into two camps. Wait, holy shit, so he's got like the whole Genshin experience. Wait, he knows? He knows about what happens if you say anything negative about the Genshin fanbase? This is crazy. He is speed running this shit. Those who follow the meta guides and micro optimize their DPS. Yeah. And those who actually have free will and they have fun with the tools Genshin gives them. There you go. Yup. 
There you go! And of course, one of these scams kept telling me that without Hu Tao, there is no way I can do Abyss 12. Now again, this entire time I firmly believe that you don't have to pull for anything. And you can just really play whatever you want. So, I decided to rise a very stupid but glorious middle finger. Okay. I went there to the internet go. and searched for Genshin DPS tier lists. Something yep. no mortal should ever do. I it agree. was one thing to see Diluc lower on all the tier lists. That way he was perfect for me to play. But I also needed a carry DPS for the second team. Yep. Someone quite bad. Okay. Even better, someone who was designed to mainly be a support. Which is how oh. my Candy Scary Challenge was born. Oh yeah, dude, here we go. To prove everyone that you should play what you want to play, and to prove that anything works, I decided to beat the game with her. And oh, just like that, yeah. my final two teams were locked in place. Dude, I bet that was bad. You're using Zheng Lin. Okay, that's cheating. He's using Zheng Lang. All right, Zheng Lang's too broken. All right, let's just be real. But there was one more... That, that's, that's Zheng Lin care, guys. ...or issue. Leveling up the teams and farming artifacts was relatively simple. But I yep. needed every help I could get, so yep. I needed good weapons. My Diluc was using something usable, but Candice really needed some help. Like Which what? meant that for the first time, as a free-to-play player, I had to pull on the weapons bag. Oh, Thankfully, no. there was one that had one of the best DPS claymores in the game, but also a really good DPS spear. Perfect for okay. my two carries. So I started pulling. And oh boy, was it painful. Now, I wouldn't say that yep. the weapons banners are a scam. Which is what... Dude, you should have seen what they were like before I got Hoyoverse to change them. You, you, you should have seen what they were like when Staff of Homo came out. You should have seen what I got... The, the entire world of, of Hoyoverse players to come together as one to change. Hey, what's up, guys? Self-proclaimed self savior of Genshin Impact here. Say, they work on the same formula as pulling for characters, except instead of getting five-star characters, you get five-star weapons. In yep. fact, the formulas are a bit more favorable towards the weapons. No, the reason why it sucks is because... It is just not satisfying. It's not. Getting new weapons is simply not as transformative as getting new characters for the entire new gameplay. Yeah. And unfortunately, I agree. things really sucked for me because this was the first time my luck ran out. Yep. My main goal was to get a good Climor for the look. So, of course, after I kept off my pity, the first weapon I got was... Let's go! Painful, sure. But I went out into the world and farmed more gems. And the next stream I returned to pull some more. Only to cap off my pity again. And then... Let's go! <laughs> so yeah, um, it got bad. But with the pity system, at least this meant that the next weapon that would drop would definitely be the Climor, right? Well, after a lot more farming, I kept off my pity again. But I didn't have enough to do my last two pulls. Oh, and this no. was on stream, and it was the last day of the battle. Oh, no. So I was forced into a dilemma. Earlier during my adventure, someone who's insane actually gifted my account 500 gems. So what I could do is just go out into the world and farm for two hours while giving people really bad stream content. Yeah. Or I could give people some good content, tap into the gems, farm it off stream later, get the climb ore and continue with the story. So that's what I did. And just to be fair, after the stream, I farmed the gems and I kept them on my account until the challenge was over. And literally on the next- Hey, I think that's fine. I think that, and I feel like if anybody has a problem with that, that's just cause they're stupid. That's my opinion. And if you disagree, that's cause you're ass stupid. My opinion. Pull, I got my Climore. So practically it is all as if I stayed free to play. Technically, however, yep. I spent $2 to give people content. Yep. Do I care? 
no, it's a stupid challenge that gave me too many 5 stars anyway. So yeah, yep. pulling for weapons is garbage, but more importantly, it's just not satisfying. Anyway, to get my team ready, there was one more thing that I have to do. Do it. Get artifacts. For the most case, go. that was easy. Or so I thought. You see, yet again, I found a flaw. Oh no. And this is a flaw that was very unique to me. Normal players will uh -huh. never face this. Up until like this what? point, I never faced backseating before. Oh, you haven't been backseated? I cannot tell you how many content creators and streamers I know that have quit. That have quit the whole game because the stream community is so f annoying. Oh my god! Is that how you're playing the game? That's so annoying. Bet you can't wail your way out of this one. Well, this streamer is the coolest because they're free to play oh my god oh jeez! oh f bro shut up dude you want to know you want to know why you want to know why the genji community has unironically actually gotten better you want to know why because obviously a lot of the honkai star rail players from the genji community you want to know why it feels better it's because now these f aren't 16 anymore and now they're f 18 because they grew the f up over the past two years and now they're realizing oh hey maybe i just stopped being a f Idiot. Every time I played a game on stream before, I was fairly confident I knew more than my viewers. In yep. general, statistically, I am above average at most games. But Genshin was my What game general. was that, bro? Statistically, I am above average at most What the, is that Omega Bro, who the f plays Omega Strikers, dog? What? Games. But Genshin was my first time experience. So I was looking for tips from time to time. And holy sh**, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I now understand why backseating sucks and why people hate it so much. In my case, it actually started with the story. At the beginning, to a Dude, you know what the worst shit is? When you're playing a game and you're about to do something and it's completely normal. And then all that chat says, no! And it's like, bro, what? New player, Genshin actually spits out a lot of names. Not only are there just many different characters by default, but you also have three enemy factions, the story that was supposed to be spread out over two years just falls on you like an avalanche, and there are also multiple villains with different motives. But throughout all of this, even though I was constantly mixing up the factions, and I kept confusing who's on whose side, I still had fun because the story was interesting. Yep. I simply enjoyed it. And that was an issue. Because I was consuming the story wrong. Apparently, I was ruining my own experience by rushing the story. And this is the same shit M-Tash has heard for years, bro. Yo, M-Tash, how dare you want to play the game? Bro, nobody will realize how bad that community is until they try to stream it. It is f***ing Or if they go on Twitter and say something like, Wow, bro, Steel is so f***ing hot. I want to f*** her. You can't! Bro, shut the f*** bro it's an anime character it's an anime character it's ridiculous or the worst guy's not really feeling uh who tells kit but that's my waifu bro oh my god dude oh my god so annoying yeah if you don't know the random fact about this character then you don't deserve to play that character oh my god even though you can't rush a story in this game Unless you skip through dialogue, you actually just consume the story at the pace at which it is presented to you. Like, what do you think I'm supposed to do? Sit down at home and think about what I just witnessed after every quest? For me personally, <laughs> it wasn't until Sumeru that yep. things really clicked together. But for some people, that was too late and I was a lost cause. All while I was having a blast. So yeah. I got backseated on how to consume the story of a video game. But well, it's just the vocal minority. Bro, shut the f up, bro. I, I can smell the paper from your f contract from here, brother. If you deny that that shit isn't an issue, you are a f moron. But that's not the only kind of backseating that happened to me. Obviously, there were some people who corrected me on how to play when it comes to the combat. To a certain degree, it was helpful when people pointed out the basics to me. But later on, some people just shoved facts into my face, which crumbled at the first moment I opened up the internet. And it was proven to me. <laughs> oh, bro, he hit him with the old Google, baby. He hit him with the old Google strat. Good shit, King. That yet again, on average, I should be trusting my own instincts more. 
Yep. And you know, from time to time, I even yep. like to troll the people who thought I was an absolute idiot. Is that a good one? Is that a good weapon for her? Or is there anything else that I can get that's better? The catch! What's the catch? Fishing. Can I go can I get can I just go and get it now? Catch go crazy. How bro. long does that one take? Long? Two weeks? Clueless. What do you buy? Catch go crazy. Why two weeks? Can I can I just get it? Can I just not get it? Wait, no way. Yeah, I can get it. Why are you <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, I hate these people, bro. I I cannot believe this shit, bro. Oh, it's like they just pull shit out of their ass. Holy shit. What? You can just buy it? You need these too? Yeah. You can just buy these. What are you on about? <laughs> oh, shit. And so, with my team oh, gathered up and my shit. weapons ready, the day came to prove everyone wrong. I unlocked the final level of the Abyss, and I went in with my scuffed team. On that okay. day, originally I just wanted to stream some stories and maybe try the Abyss for a bit. But instead, I ended up grinding the final floor of the Abyss for five hours. And how was that? Was that good? Did you get it? Did you do it? Did you, did you beat it? After all, this was my own stupid challenge that was preventing me from paying. It was yep. the first time I faced that floor. And I have to say, I had an absolute blast. Yeah, it was good. This was probably the most fun I have had in this game. Yep, yep, it is, it is. Isn't the combat so good? Dude, imagine if they were to expand upon it. So that way you could get that feeling over and over and over again. Oh wait, they won't. It was like playing Dark Souls in Genshin, and it was awesome. It is true that around the four hour mark, I took a break yep. for 30 seconds, and then I went right back in. And at the end, we faced We Nut, a yep. boss that is notorious for stalling time. Some he must be a techno viewer. Thing that my low DPS team really didn't like. But at the end, I did it. It was pain. Let's go, it baby. Suffering, but with my candy scary, I beat Spiral Abyss 12. Let's go. With uh, zero stars and Huge. eight seconds left on the timer. Hey, that's a dub, baby. That's a mother f dub. And I was happy with it. You see, this entire challenge was stupid to begin with. But since all my characters were fully leveled up, I realized that from that point on, the only difference between zero stars... I bet you next time I play Genshin Impact and I go into the Spiral Abyss, I can clear all of it with three stars in less than 15 minutes. I mean, we'll see. If people want me to go back and play 4.0, I'll play 4.0. You know? I will. Okay? Maybe maybe the fandom's grown up a little bit. Maybe maybe they can handle a, a real f man like myself. Because back in the day, they f couldn't. Maybe maybe we walk in 4.0 and, uh, and, we, and we slap the shit out of it. And nine stars are artifacts. That's the only way you can raise your power. And you know what artifacts are about? Luck. I could have prolonged my challenge to at least some stars, but from that point on, yep. it's not that much of a skill issue anymore. True. It's just the case of having enough DPS to do it on time. Yep, DPS check, that's all it is. And that pure lack of damage comes from the artifacts alone. Speaking of which, my zero star abyss achievement became a little bit more impressive when people checked out what artifacts I had. There you well, go. More than half of them were at level zero, and my dendro traveler was in a wheelchair. He beat the hardest content in the game with plus zero artifacts. So, what the f you think I'm gonna do to the game when I show up with an R5 weapon, every character C6, and near perfect artifacts at plus 20 on every single character, bro? I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kill that mob so f***ing hard, it's gonna have AoE damage and kill that same mob on other people's f***ing games, okay? They are going to explode that f***ing hard. Maybe that will give you some perspective. But yeah, what a stupid challenge that was. Don't do what I did. Speaking of artifacts, we are not done yet. Because throughout the entire journey, all of this got kept off with one more thing. The okay. absolute king of triggering me. You see, as someone new, 
One yeah. could argue that I didn't have a lot of time to farm artifacts, yeah, true. which meant that there would be a lot of artifacts that were not perfect, right. but which were incredible for me given the fact that I was a new player. Right? Right? Right. It would not be unthinkable to comprehend that I didn't have two years of time to farm artifacts. Oh, why are you using that one? It's so bad, because it's the best I have, you f dumb shit! That when I got an artifact with crit rate and crit damage, it was good enough for me. That it could yep. be one that I could use really well. No, in the eyes of all of you, it was all mid. Yep. All artifacts are either perfect or mid. A yep. flower with crit rate and 80% roll into crit damage? <laughs> that's mid. A great pyro artifact? Well, that's not part of the set, so it's mid. There were times when I was really happy that I got a really good artifact, only to look at my chat and see mid. Isn't that so crazy? He had the genuine Genshin community experience, bro. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, bro. And that just sucked. But not as much as trying to catch butterflies on my phone. That's yep. far worse. Yup. <laughs> well, then why don't you just get Sayu? She freezes the butterflies in place. It helps. What a absolute beautiful video summarize the Genjin player experience as well as the content creator experience in one video. I don't know where he goes from this, but this was a perfect video, dude. Necrit, I love your videos, dog. Make sure to go like and subscribe to that. So good. God damn.